everyone, welcome to my channel. So this is going to be my first ever booktube video, <laughs> which is really exciting for me. I wanted to do booktube for a while, um, so I'm really glad that I'm finally starting. And I'm going to start with a bookshelf tour, because what better way to uh, get to know someone by than by looking through their bookshelves? <laughs> So I do have a bookstagram as well, uh, so some of you might know me off there, so if you're interested I'll link that down below. So a little bit of information about me, uh, my name's Chloe and I'm 19 years old and I do live in the UK. Um, I'm going to go into my second year of university in September and I'm studying ancient history, which you will definitely be able to see when you look through all my books. <laughs> yeah, the focus is kind of on Greece and Rome and Egypt which is really really exciting. People always say do you have a favourite Greece or Rome and I can't really say that I do but secretly it's Greece probably. <laughs> Hope you all enjoy this video and I'm gonna get started. So these are the shelves that I'll be showing you guys today. So yeah I will um, start right off on my top shelf. In fact, I thought that I'd start just here um, and show you guys um, just some of my decorations that don't fit onto my bookshelf. So down here, I've just got some notebooks for university next year. Which are just really pretty to be fair. I got them off Redbubble. I think Redbubble is so nice. can be a little bit expensive, but it's nice supporting um, independent artists. Then I've got this little elephant candle which is really really cute, my dad got me that as a gift. I have this painting of Medea which my friend who's an artist made for me, uh, she drew this for me and it's absolutely lovely, thank you Lily. I've got a postcard here from the Fitzwilliam Museum of a Roman mosaic. And up here I've just got one of my textbooks for university because I did do a history module last year which was on the history of the Americas so we got to do Latin America. And up here I have got my classical Greek style bust. Me and my friend have named him Claude. <laughs> it's a bit weird but he's not um, modelled particularly after any individual. So he's just a really nice addition to my bookshelves. He's really really aesthetic. And then I've just got some incense over here which is... Um, which is really lovely. Now I can bring you guys to my top shelf. So these are all my ancient classics in the Penguin Classics editions. So yeah, let's get started. So over here I've got Sophocles and this is Electra and Other Plays. Women of Trachis is one of my absolute favourite plays of all time. I could not recommend it enough. Oh, so the order of this, basically, these are all the older translations of uh, Penguin Classics and that's how kind of I've ordered it, so they're all in their groups <laughs> of when they were brought out. Then I've got Letters of the Younger Pliny, Pausanias Guide to Greece, which I'm really excited to read, this arrived the other day. I've read extracts and fragments of Pausanias, but I think it will be really, really fun um, to actually read the full book and I can't get that back into my shelf oh no that's gonna have to come down for now then I have Plautus the pot of gold and other plays so Plautus was a Roman comedic playwright then I've got Protonius Protonius oh my god I can't speak today I've got Petro I did say what did I Petronius, the Satyricon and the Fragments, which I'm again really excited to read, that's a Roman novel. Uh, Juvenal, the Sixteen Satires, again Roman. Ovid, the Erotic Poems, which I'm really excited to read. And some works of Euripides. So Euripides is one of the um, three big Greek tragedians that survives today, and out of all of them his, uh, his work is the most surviving. Here I've got two books which are just my babies, I really really love them. So I've got Marcus Aurelius Meditations which I'm reading at the moment and I'm really really loving this, I would definitely recommend this. I've also got Plato, The Last Days of Socrates. This is a book which I'm also reading so it kind of fits that these two are my current reads at the moment. 
Then I have some of Aeschylus's plays. He was uh, another Greek tragedian. So I've got Prometheus Bound, The Suppliant, Seven Against Thebes and the Persians. I've got the Oresteia on the way, which is the only surviving Greek uh, play tragedy trilogy, which is really exciting. I got that in the Loeb edition as well, so it was really expensive, but it's gonna be so amazing because it will have the classical Greece on one side and then the English translation. So yeah, definitely worth the money. Next I have Suetonius, The Twelve Caesars. Um, then I have some Sophocles and Euripides together as the Greek tragedians of the classical period that survive. So that's the three Theban plays and Medea and other plays. Here I have Homer's Iliad as well. So many people are going to be quite alarmed by this but I've not actually read uh, the Iliad the whole way through. And I know that's really, really awful as a classic student, but I just have never got round to it. I've never, uh, there's always been something else that I really want to read first. So I'm definitely gonna have to remedy that and read it soon. <laughs> Next I've got Herodotus the Histories. Again, most of these I did buy for my studies as well for first year, so I did buy this for first year studies. Uh, Tacitus the Histories. Sallust, Catiline's Wars with Earthline War and Histories. I did buy that for a module again for last year. That was the module Life and Literature in the Roman Republic. Then I've got a Greek comedian, Aristophanes, Frogs and Other Plays. I really want to um, read some of Menander as well, so I'm going to try and get some of that soon. Cassius Dio, The Roman History, The Reign of Augustus. This Absolute Gem, which is Ovid Metamorphoses. I have also got some of his other works on the way, so I've got Fasti on the way and that's all about Roman rituals, Roman traditions and festivals. So I'm so, so excited to read that one. Then I've got Seneca for Tragedies and Octavia. I'm really excited to see um, how this differs kind of from Euripides, because I know that Seneca, um, in a way he does copies of the Greek tragedies. So that'll be intriguing to see his take on the myth. And then I've got Procopius, The Secret History, which is a history written in the late Roman Empire. So it was under Justinian this was written, so I think around 400 AD. Then over here I've got my book decorations. So I've got a bronze um, kind of statue of Achilles, which I got for my birthday off my dad. So yeah, just thank you so much. I think this it's just so nice and I love Achilles even though he is still a little bit problematic because all of the Greek heroes are a little bit problematic. And then I've got this little Grecian style pot that I found secondhand that I think is just really, really sweet. So yeah, that is my first shelf, everyone. Now I can show you guys my second shelf, which is my Oxford World Classics, all ancient, um, ancient Greek and Roman as well. And then some of my retellings across here. So I'll start on this side again. So firstly, I've got this vintage style globe, which is just so pretty and a really, really nice uh, bookshelf decoration. Then I have the first book across here, which is Venus and Aphrodite by Bettany Hughes. Now, Bettany Hughes is literally just one of my absolute favourite um, classicists of all time. Obviously, along with um, with Mary Beard and Michael Scott. But I think the way that she writes in this book in particular, it's a mixture of academic and informative. But at the same time, it's still really accessible. So if you're wanting to get into uh, mythology... Um, especially Greek mythology and Roman mythology, then I would definitely recommend um, this book. It's a great entryway into classics as well. The next book I have is A History of Alexandria, which is a city that has always fascinated me quite a lot as well, so I'm really excited to read that at some point. Here I have a book on women in antiquity, so Women in Greece and Rome by Sarah Pomeroy. That's Goddesses, Whores, Wives and Slaves. Um, I still haven't got around to reading that yet, but I'm really, really excited to um, because I'm quite drawn to um, society as well. 
the society and how the society works and societal norms they're some they're things that really interest me about the ancient world so yeah very looking forward to reading that next i have the odyssey by homer but very big but <laughs> in the Emily Wilson translation. So this is one that absolutely everybody raves about. Everyone loves it so much. So I'm just really, really excited to read it at some point. It's been on my shelves now for must be about two months and I still haven't got around to reading it. So I'm a bit mad at myself that I've not read it yet, but I will read it soon. Next, I have two Bethany Hughes books again because I love her, as I've said. And this is one all about Socrates. Yeah, I think I'm really drawn to ancient philosophy, partic uh, particularly Socrates, Plato and Aristotle. Plato is just one of my all-time favourite ancient figures, um, even though he's a fascist, but I still like him. <laughs> but yeah, I really, really am looking forward to reading this book. It only arrived recently as well. This is all about Helen of Troy, so obviously another very um, well-known figure, if not the most well-known Greek mythological female figure of all time. <laughs> so yeah, I got this for my EPQ, which I also got this book for, The Trojan War, I'll bring this out now. So I wrote my EPQ, which um, if you don't know what that is, it's basically just an extended project. It's a piece of writing that you do before you go to university. So I did it in sixth form and I did mine on um, why Troy fell. You see talk about whether I think the Trojan War was a mythological war or whether I thought that it was historically something that did happen. I would like to know your opinions on this. So yeah, please feel free to comment and we'll start a, um, a conversation up in the comments. I personally think that it was mythological, but there we go. But I would definitely say this is a very good book if you are speculative like me about whether it was just myth or whether there is some historical uh, facts to it. So there we go. Back over here, so I've got A Thousand Ships and Silence of the Girls, both kind of Trojan war retellings which focus from on the female perspective. Um, I have heard good and bad things about both of these. I've not actually read them yet, but I'm definitely looking forward to. I think they are both a little bit problematic though, um, but still both written by women from women's perspectives. So I'm still really looking forward to that. Then I've got Stephen Fry Heroes. It's a really, really beautiful cover. I am really excited to read it. My only issue is it does look a little kind of basic in its knowledge, but I can't judge a book by its cover, which I'm doing, so I'm definitely going to have to give that a read and see what I think. Here I've got The Rise and Fall of Classical Greece. So this is very different to all the books that I've kind of got already because it focuses on the economy of Greece. So I'm really, really looking forward to um, reading from an economical perspective, um, Athens and different uh, polis. And here I've got uh, The Parthenon by David Stutton. I think the lighting's gone a little bit bad, so I'm really sorry if you can't see this very well. But I'm really excited to read that as well. I also keep this homemade bookmark above these books as well. Um, and this is just my homemade bookmark on the Athenian Acropolis. I'm not a very good artist or painter, but um, yeah, I just really love it. Um, this is just a little uh, Tower of Pisa. Um, statue that my parents got me when they visited Italy because I unfortunately have not visited Italy which is really really sad something that I was gonna go to Rome um, with my partner in June but obviously that couldn't happen anyway now we can move on to my Oxford world classics so here we go I've got Thucydides the Peloponnesian War I'm not sure I do think this is a view that most people share but I really do not like him. Like I just think that he's not really entertaining and it's not boring, but it just could be written a lot better. And I do think a lot of people share that view, but obviously I'm still very intrigued to see what everyone does think. So please, again, feel free to comment what you think about Thucydides. Here I've got Longer, Staphnis and Chloe. This is a Greek novel, one I think only about six that survive. 
um, and it's just a really really sweet very small book so basically it's about them as teenagers just falling in love and learning everything there is about love and desire so it's a really really sweet kind of coming of age book as well then I've got Cicero, the man, I've got his defence speeches. He is just an absolutely awesome figure, I think. Um, there's someone that's on Bookstagram, so if you're watching this at Classics for Plebs, you will, I'm sure, be very happy that he's got a mention. He is a really interesting figure. Um, his oratory skills are just absolutely incredible, and it's just so entertaining and fascinating to read so I would definitely recommend that. He is um, by the way in the Re Roman Republic so he's a Roman Republic orator and I think he does philosophy as well so he's a man of many skills. <laughs> then we've got Plutarch, Roman Lives. Um, this is translated by M.L. West and it is a collection of Greek lyric poetry. So Greek lyric poetry was from about 650 to 450 BC, around then. And this anthology includes kind of the big poets, which is kind of Archilochus and Sappho, um, their fragments. So I'm really excited to give that a flick through. Then I've got Lucretius on the nature of the universe. He is a Roman philo uh, philosopher. Next I have Apollodorus, the library of Greek mythology. It's a really, really great resource um, if you want to start reading Greek mythology and you don't really know where to start, I would always recommend this. Then I have Euripides and this is the Bacchae and other plays. Very, very interesting uh, play, this one. Very, very interesting. Next, I have Apollonius of Rose, Jason and the Golden Fleece. Um, I loved seeing Medea and Circa make their appearances in this, um, in this book, so I really, really liked this. Then I have Catalyst, the Complete Poems, and this is just an absolute beautiful anthology. Um, I did study this for university, I studied Catalyst and his connection and his relationship with Lesbia who's the main figure in this because Catalyst does take a lot of his inspiration from Sappho as well so that's really interesting to, to read. Next I come to a little bit of a philosophy section. So I have some Aristotle and that's the Nicomachean Ethics. Uh, again, this only arrived quite recently. I was supposed to be on a book buying ban, but I'm definitely not. So <laughs> now we can move on to my small Plato section over here. So you're probably wondering um, why this is here because it's quite out of place and you might have missed it before and it's because it has arrived in between filming so I thought I would put it in with my Plato section and this is Plato's The Republic. It's one of his bigger uh, reads, it's about 400 pages but I'm really looking forward to this. Um, I really want to buy basically all of his other works so that I have a little uh, mini library of Plato's works. Uh, I especially want to read his selected myths and buy all of the other dialogues which I do not already have. So yeah. Then I have Plato's Symposium. This is just an absolutely fantastic book. I think it's a great, um, greatly accessible book if you are just starting with ancient philosophy. I think if you don't know where to start with ancient philosophy, I'll definitely recommend this because it's all about love. So it's a really sweet um, book. Then lastly, I have um, another collection of Euripides plays and this is the Trojan Women and other plays. I've got this, um, this collection for one of my modules that I did last year and that was on tragedy, comedy and history. Um, the world of Greek literature. Um, I think Andromache is probably my favourite from this collection. I really, really love that play, as well as um, Hecuba. That was incredible. So I would definitely recommend this if you're after a good tragedy with amazing uh, female characters in it. So that is my second shelf. And that is the end of all of my ancient classics as well. Um... In fact, no, I lie, it is not. I've got other translations down here. Just don't listen to me, guys, honestly. 
<laughs> so now I can take you on with my third shelf. So I have got some more ancient classics, but because they're not in specific um, kind of Penguin and Oxford translations, they've just had to come down here because I'm quite particular about how my shelves look. So yeah, I'll start the tour. So here I have a couple of the Penguin Little Black Classics. Um, I also have a copy of Homer's Odyssey in this beautiful translation which I got from Foils in London. That was lovely. Here I have this, it's a very interesting book this one. And I picked it up at a second hand store because, oh I've, I've not mentioned this yet actually. I, I do shop quite a lot at second hand bookstores. So over I would say half of all of these are bought second hand. I'll just show you guys inside this book because, oh, that's backwards, lovely. <laughs> I'll show you guys inside this book just because it's so pretty. So yeah, it's very tiny and definitely one that I just couldn't leave at the bookstore. Then I have a short introduction on ancient philosophy. Weirdly, I've not actually read this yet, even though it would have made much more sense if I read this before I started reading, um, you know, Plato. Um, but I think I will still get round to it because it's very interesting. I think it's got a good chapter on the pre-Socratics and their group of people, which I'm also really interested in. So, yeah. Next, I have Gibbon's Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. Some of my books are quite outdated, I would say, uh, mainly just because I did buy them secondhand. So this isn't something I would specifically read now, and it's definitely something that I would not reference in a university essay. However, I still think it's just a nice book to have and flick through. Next I have I, Claudius by Robert Graves. This is kind of considered a modern classic, Robert Graves wrote this as a biography for Emperor Claudius. So this is a book which I'm surprised that I've actually not read yet and it's very high up on my list. And it won't fit, okay, that's fine. <laughs> Next I have Roman Britain. This is another book which I'm just really excited about. I feel like I don't really know too much about Roman Britain and that is a gap in my ancient knowledge. So yeah. Next I have a uh, Greek sculpture. This is one that I bought second hand. I'll quickly th uh, flick through it to show you guys some of the sculptures. So this is quite an old book. So, uh, so I more just bought it just because it's really aesthetic and it is nice just for a little flick through. And after that I have Roman art, so I'll bring that one down and show you guys this one as well. This one is just one of my favourites. Um, it's again, it is quite old, but I love how all the frescoes and the architecture is all in colour. It's just so gorgeous. Next we come to a little bit of a mythology section, so I've got Mythology by Edith Hamilton. I have got the hardback of that which my friend so nicely gifted to me, which is further down which I'll show you guys later. Then I've got Circa by Madeline Miller. So I, f I read this only a couple of weeks ago and it's just absolutely fantastic. I could not recommend this enough to someone who um, is wanting to read uh, about Greek mythology. I would also definitely recommend Madeline Miller's uh, The Song of Achilles. I don't have that copy myself, my sister has that copy which I borrowed off her but it is just incredible so I could not recommend this author enough. Then I have this book which is just, it's just the holy grail and this is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I could not recommend this book enough, it's just absolutely incredible definitely the holy grail <laughs> this is just an incredible book i think it's very accessible if you're wanting to start your journey with classics or even just as a um as a normal fiction book it's just absolutely fantastic now we come to a bit of a ancient egypt section so i've got cleopatra by michael grant which i bought second hand 
Daughters of Isis, which is about women of ancient Egypt, because that is, again, I think I said earlier, I'm very interested in societal roles and society of the ancient worlds. My friend bought this for me for, me for my birthday, so thank you very much. And then I've also got um, The Oxford History of Ancient Egypt by Ian Shaw. Um, this one is kind of a bit out of place, but I don't really know where else to put it. So I've just got The Epic of Gilgamesh, which is one of the foundational texts. This, def this predates Homer because I think it was found on clay tablets, so it's all very fragmentary as well. A really interesting read. Now I've, we can move on to um, The Ennead by Virgil. I picked this up secondhand. I think I picked all of these up secondhand, which are here as well. Um, I've, I've not actually read this yet, but I've had very mixed opinions, so I think I'll still have to give that a go, get my own view on it. Then I've got this chunky, chunky book. This is ridiculously big, and this is the basic works of Aristotle. So I'll bring this down and show you guys. I think this contains pretty much, yeah, two pounds. This contains pretty much all of his works, I think, even though I already have a couple. But yeah, it kind of tells you here what's included. So I was so lucky that I, um, I found this second hand. And this brings me on to Aristotle's Politics and the Athenian Constitution. Um, I just think this is a really gorgeous book. It is, um, I think, quite old from the 1920s, maybe. But it's just gorgeous and I'm really excited to read that. Next, I have the Dialogues of Plato. Um, I think I do have some that overlap because obviously I've got the Symposium. And I do think I have a couple of others as well. Um, but yeah, again, just, just, I just love him. I love him so much. <laughs> then I have Tales from the Thousand and One Nights, which I'm really, really excited to read as well. Then... Um, Antony and Cleopatra by William Shakespeare. I think this and Hamlet are ones that I really, really want to read from Shakespeare. I always used to dislike him. I think it's because when you study him in, you know, high school or secondary school, it can really put you off an author. Um, but I'm glad that I'm going to start getting back into him soon. Now we can move on to these two books down here in some of my decorations. So this is the Oxford Grammar of Classical Greek and Latin Grammar. A classical Greek next year at university, my third year. I was going to do it this year, but I thought everything going on with coronavirus means that I wouldn't have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with my professors. So it would make a lot more sense for me to take it next year because as a language, um, and learning a language, you know, right from beginner level, I feel like it is quite important that you do have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with your tutors. Then I have this little magnet, which I bought from the Fitzwilliam Museum. Um, a candle, a little plant, which is fake because I do forget to water my plants. <laughs> so that's good. And then I also have a little postcard from the Fitzwilliam Museum too, because that's somewhere that I very recently visited, just visited there last week with my friend. So that is my third shelf complete. Now I can take you guys onto my last shelf, my final shelf. So my ancient history texts, they're all this side onwards and it ends here. So here onwards I've got kind of classics as well as YA because I do read quite a lot of YA fantasy so yeah I'll start the tour now so these books are all here because they are just so tall they don't really fit into my bookshelf in my room very well um so here I've got um the golden ass This is an ancient text, by the way, for those that are unaware. And this is in the Folio Society edition. Um, then it's absolutely gorgeous editions. I think it was originally named Metamorphoses, but then he changed it because um, Ovid's Metamorphoses was a bit more popular. 
I mean, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened. And I find it quite funny, actually, in a bit of a, uh, a bit of a mean way, bless him. And then I've got Plutarch's, oh, I'm covering that. It's, this is the rise and fall of Athens. So again, these copies are just absolutely gorgeous. The illustrations are so lovely. And I found these very weirdly in a second-hand bookstore, which was a converted church. So that was really interesting to see. Um, here I have a history of ancient Egypt. I think these Blackwell editions are very trustworthy, so I do try and buy from them. And I did um, manage to get this a bit cheaper second hand, which is really, really good because these can be very expensive. I think some of these that I'm going to show you as well, they are textbooks. Some of them are still on loan from university, so they are quite expensive books, but they are very, very good. Next, I have this really, really cute book on the Mycenaean civilization. So for those that don't know, the Mycenaeans are a civilization that existed kind of in Asian prehistory. So their um, early kind of Bronze Age civilization that predate, well, you know, the classical Greece that we know it to be now. And yeah, I'm really, really excited to read this. You may have also heard of the Minoans. Unfortunately, I don't have a book on the Minoans, but these, those two civilizations are the most well known from that era. Then I have the Hardback Mythology, which is by Edith Hamilton, which I said before, my friend so kindly got me for my birthday. It's just gorgeous. Here I have the Oxford History of the Classical World. Again, a very, very chunky book, but I think very, very good for an overview to look through. I'm not sure if I would really read it now, um, because I wouldn't say that it goes into a lot of detail. It is just a broad overview, obviously, because it's of the whole classical world. But still a very, very good introduction if you are wanting to familiar familiarise yourself with uh, classics and ancient Greece and Rome is a book that I got from uni that I still need to return. I'm literally praying that my uni haven't charged me because I've had these on loan for since like February so that's all bad. But this is Polybius and Roman Imperialism. Next I have a book on symbols which I thought was really really interesting. It's always been something that I want to look into in a bit more detail. Then I have Forgotten Peoples of the Ancient World. I think this is such an important book. Um, because the focus tends to be on Greece, Rome and Egypt, which is all good because they're amazing, very, very interesting and fascinating civilizations. But they do tend to, um, you know, make these smaller civilizations very overlooked. So I'm really, really excited about that. And then here to match kind of my um, Oxford Grammar of Classical Greece up there, I have got Greek to GCSE by John Taylor, which is one that was, is very highly recommended for um, Greek beginners. Then I have this textbook that for the beginnings of Rome. So I think it covers up to the start of the Punic Wars. Yeah. Book for university, but um, yet again, it is very expensive. So I would never buy books like this textbooks like this I would just loan them from my university and we have this gem that I found secondhand which is um, art and identity in the Roman world and that is my baby Marcus Aurelius hello Marcus gosh I sound like a bit of a weirdo <laughs> you guys are gonna be watching this like she's very weird actually next I have a book on ancient philosophy um, this is an overview, I think it goes from the pre-Socratics all the way up to, I think, Roman um, philosophy as well, which is really, really good. So, yeah, only £4 as well. It was a very, very cheap book. Next, I have the, um, the end of the Roman Republic, which is, as you can probably tell, a book that I loaned from university. And then I also have um, Rome and the Western Greeks by Catherine Lomas. She is an excellent writer. I really love all of her work. But again, that is a, a university level book. I don't think I would buy books this specialised just for my shelves. 
um, when I can just loan them from university. I think unless I was really, really interested in a specific era, um, that's when I would buy books specialised to that. Because I obviously am very interested in classical Greece, so I've got these books there. And this book marks the final book of my ancient history section. So, ancient history, you are done now. <laughs> Honestly, when I look at it like this, I, I'm kind of shocked at how much I've spent on all of these books. But it's definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. So now I can show you guys the remainder of my shelves, which is just, just this. And I've got Leo Tolstoy, Anna Karenina, Alexander Dumas, The Count of Monte Cristo, which is a massive book. I'm very intimidated by this, but I know a lot of people tend to be quite intimidated by the size of this as well. So I'm glad that I'm not the only one. <laughs> then I've got E.M. Forster, and that's just A Room With A View. I bought this a while ago, but I've still unfortunately not had time to read that yet because I am focusing on my ancient history books. So here I have in the same edition as my Odyssey um, edition, I have Lady Chatterley's Lover and Little Women. Back down here, I have some Carol Ann Duffy and this is Rapture. I think Carol Ann Duffy is one of my favourite um, modern poets. I think she is so talented and her work is just um, amazing. Then I have Ian McEwan on Chesil Beach. Um, I bought this after I saw the film and I've still not read this yet, but the film was just absolutely fantastic. So I'm sure that I'll really, really enjoy that. I've read Atonement and I loved Atonement as well. So then I have this beautiful book, which I found secondhand the other day on French medieval romances. Next, I have Receiver of Many by Rachel Alexander, which is a Hades and Persephone retelling. Um, I didn't really like the first book. I really, really did enjoy the sequel, though, which is called Destroyer of Light. I read that on um, online. Um, that was much better than this um, first book. Then I have one of my favourite series of all time, his Fair Assassin series, and it really is one of my favourite of favourite series of all time. I've lent the third book out to one of my friends, but I just absolutely love it. It's set in about 15th century uh, Brittany, and it's all about these women um, in convents that are daughters of uh, Mortain, who is deaf, and they are assassins. So it's really, really interesting books really really good reads i think it's still like ya targeted as well so they're quite easy reads at the same time then i will quickly go up here so i just got this little pot from corfu when i visited there a couple years ago and it's just really really cute so i thought i would include that on my shelves then the last series i have is the cruel prince by holly black i really really enjoyed this series i thought it was really really fun a really good read so yeah i am done i can't believe it so that is the end of my bookshelf tour everyone hi everyone so basically i realized that i i have kind of a small bookshelf at my boyfriend's house these are all the books that i've got at my boyfriend's house that i am planning on taking with me back to my um bookshelf at home but it's just because i bought these on days out that we did together and we just came here afterwards so i just haven't been able to take them home yet um so i'll just quickly show you guys these The ones that I'm kind of most interested in are probably this Roman mythology. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> A Traveller's Guide from Troy to Tivoli. I've heard so many good things about this. And then the Silk Roads. I got this for £1 in a charity shop, so I'm very happy with this one. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> you can't really see it now. But yeah, these are all of my books. <laughs> I've got quite a few on mythology here. Gosh, it's a mess. So yeah, now this is the official end of my bookshelf tour. <laughs> 
Um, so that is the end of my uh, bookshelf tour. If you all enjoyed it, and if you're not already, you will go out and buy some Plato because we know now, you know now that I love him, so. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I hope you all enjoyed and feel free to subscribe if you would like to see any more um, ancient history um, type videos because that's what I'm planning on releasing in future. Uh, things like my reviews of some ancient history texts, but also um, Greek mythology. And when university starts as well, I'm planning on giving you guys a bit of a day in the life of a classic student and taking you around my university with me um, as I do my ancient history degree, which is really exciting. So yeah, if you want to see things like that, then please subscribe and like this video. Thank you. Bye.